What's going on guys, it's Paul here, and I did a video previously where I compared the Zoom F2, which is this pocket field recorder, to the Tascam DR10L. And in that video, I mentioned that I wasn't really even using this recorder with lavalier microphones, even though that's kind of what it's designed for. I've been primarily using it with the Deity D3 Pro, which is this on-camera style shotgun microphone. And as you can see, it makes this nice compact little 32-bit float recorder and shotgun microphone package. And you're listening to the audio from the setup right now. So as you can hear, you get decent audio from it. Now, I'm about to be handling this microphone. So right now, I'll switch over to the lavalier microphone that I'm wearing so we don't get handling noise right here. Just as a quick update since the last video, I did finally get around to designing and 3D printing this little bracket for the D3 Pro mount that holds the Zoom F2. And it just uses the, the belt clip so it can slide on and off, but it holds it nice and securely. And I have links in the description below, so if you have a 3D printer, you can download the files for free, 3D print it yourself, and you're good to go. If you don't have access to a 3D printer and you still want this bracket, then I also have a link down there to my Etsy shop so you can purchase one for yourself. So I've been really happy with this setup. I get great audio from this microphone, and just having 32-bit float audio has made things so much faster and easier in pre-production shooting and post-production. Just as a one-man band, it has made more of a difference than I thought it would. So I love this setup. The one limitation is that with the Zoom F2, you are limited to microphones like the Deity D3 Pro that use a 3.5 millimeter or 1 8 inch jack. So what do you do if you want to record something like this Audio-Technica microphone which uses XLR and it's a condenser microphone, so it requires 48 volt phantom power. Well, you can, of course, buy a field recorder that has all those capabilities built in, 32-bit float, phantom power, XLR jack, all of those things. But at the time of recording this video, the cheapest option for something like that is the recently announced Tascam Porticapture X8, which runs around $499. Now, as a side note, I did pre-order that audio recorder, so you can subscribe if you're interested in seeing my review in the near future. But if you're looking for something half that cost and you just need something simple with one audio input, then what I'm about to show you is the setup I've been using and it's been working really well for me. So in order to make this system work, there are three main things that you'll need, starting with the Zoom F2, which will allow you to record in 32-bit float. If you get the standard Zoom F2, it runs for around $179 at the time of recording this video. Or if you get this version, which is the Zoom F2 BT, it is Bluetooth enabled, and that just allows you to control it from the app. And I'll link up above to my previous video if you wanna know what all you can do through the app. But this version will go for about $50 more, so around $230 for this recorder. The next thing that you'll need is this cable adapter, which is male XLR on one end and 3.5 millimeter or 1 8 inch on the other end. That cable runs for usually around $10. And then we have this guy. This is the Mackie M48, which is a 48 volt inline phantom power supply, and it has XLR input and output and the m48 runs for around 60 dollars us so if you get the standard zoom f2 you're looking at about 250 dollars for all three or about 300 if you get the bluetooth version now an absolutely optional fourth item for this setup is this bracket which is another one that i've designed and 3d printed it attaches to the m48 and allows the zoom f2 to just slide on and kind of clip into place there just keeps things a little more together and organized. And if you're interested in that bracket, I again have links in the description so you can either download it, print it yourself for free, or you can purchase it from my Etsy shop. And again, that's totally optional. You could also get away with doing something similar with a Velcro strap. So those are the few pieces that you need and then setting it all up and connecting it really straightforward. I'll just take the XLR end of the cable and connect that to the output of the M48 and then the other end can go in the input of the Zoom F2. I'll just clip that onto the bracket there. And for the M48, it does come with a wall power adapter. So if you're in a studio setting, you're not really going anywhere, you can just plug this up and use wall power, not even worry about batteries. 
or if you're going full field recorder and you need everything to be mobile and battery powered, the M48 does use a nine volt battery for battery power. So that's what I'll use in this case. And there's a power button on this end. I'll just press that and now we're powered on there. And then we'll bring in our microphone. So that will just connect, of course, to the input of the M48. And all that we have remaining is to power on the Zoom F2. So we're getting input through the microphone. I can press record. And now what you should be hearing is the audio using this system coming from the Audio-Technica microphone powered by all of this that we just assembled here. And from my time using this system, I haven't noticed any audio degradation or any increase in noise floor running through the phantom power supply. And I'll give you a few seconds of silence here so you can listen closely for yourself. Now I've switched the audio back to this lavalier microphone and I'm going to disconnect a few of these things because I have a feeling there might be some questions about using this type of system with dynamic microphones such as the Rode PodMic because dynamic microphones don't require 48 volt phantom power. And what I'll just go ahead and say before I even give you the audio test is that if you're doing something like recording a podcast in a studio type of setting with a dynamic microphone, this is certainly not the system that I would recommend for that. And the primary reason is that dynamic microphones are really gain hungry. And these types of recorders are just not meant for that type of use. So what I'll do is uh, I've, as you can see, I've disconnected the M48 altogether. I'm only using that adapter cable running straight into the Zoom F2. And if I start recording and I've now switched the audio, to this microphone, you're probably hearing a lot of hiss in the background. Now I've normalized the audio to negative 23 LUFS, and it's just because this microphone itself is so quiet, it's raised the noise floor and that's brought up a lot of that hiss. And what you're hearing now is after I've used the Accusonus noise remover plugin to try to clean it up as much as possible. So this shows you what's possible with this. Again, absolutely not what I would recommend, but if you're absolutely in a pinch, I guess it could work. So if you found this video helpful, you can give it a thumbs up. That really helps out the channel. You can also subscribe if you wanna see more content like this in the future, and I will see you in the next video.